Welcome. In this video, we will guide you through the disassembly, repair, and reassembly of the Viking 724 series pump. This video applies to H through LL sizes. Before you begin, please consult the appropriate technical service manual for safety information. A copy of the latest revision can be found on our website at vikingpump.com. The seal service kit with genuine Viking pump spare parts contains all required parts and special tools. The following tools are required. A soft-headed hammer, hook nose spanner wrench, two pin spanner wrench, lock nut tool and socket wrench, a brass or hardwood bar, o-ring pick, packing hook, allen wrenches, box end wrenches, flathead screwdriver, o-ring grease, and a ruler. Keep the pump and work area as clean as possible. Drain the pump of any residual liquid. Turning the shaft will help expel any liquid trapped in the gear teeth. Mark the head and casing before disassembly to ensure proper reassembly. Remove the head cap screws. If the pump is equipped with a jacketed head plate, it will need to be removed first. Remove the head by tilting it backward to prevent the idler from falling off the idler pin. Remove the old head gasket. Insert a brass bar or piece of hardwood in the port opening and between the rotor teeth to keep the shaft from turning. Bend up the tang of the lock washer and with a spanner wrench, remove the lock nut and lock washer from the shaft. Loosen the two set screws in the face of the bearing housing and remove the bearing housing assembly from the bracket. We will cover bearing housing disassembly and reassembly later in this video. Remove the pair of half round rings under the inner spacer collar from the shaft. Note that H and HL size pumps, as used in this video, do not have these rings. Remove the brass bar. The rotor and shaft assembly can now be removed from the pump. A soft headed hammer may be needed to tap on the end of the shaft for removal. Take care in removing the rotor and shaft to avoid damaging the casing bushing. Remove the packing gland to expose the packing. Use a packing hook to take out the packing. If your pump has a lantern ring, remove that as well. Remove the packing retainer washer. Inspect the pump parts for wear, particularly critical parts such as the rotor, casing, idler pin, idler bushing, and casing bushing. Replace any worn components. It's recommended not to reuse packing unless you've been instructed to do so by Viking Pump or your authorized Viking Pump distributor. These pumps contain a jacket feature between the bracket and casing. If replacing the casing bushing or these jacket o-rings, remove the bracket cap screws and remove the casing from the bracket. Remove the two jacket chamber o-rings. To replace the casing bushing, remove the old bushing using an arbor press. When installing, use care to avoid breaking or damaging the carbon graphite bushing. Bushings with lubrication grooves should be installed with the groove at the top or 12 o'clock position. Use a lubricant and make certain that the bushing is started straight. Use a press to completely install the bushing in one continuous motion. Starting and stopping will crack the bushing. Replace the jacket chamber o-rings and reinstall the casing to its original orientation on the bracket. Place the packing retainer washer at the bottom of the bore and install the new packing. Lubricate the packing rings to aid with assembly. Stagger the packing ring joints from one side of the shaft to the other to make sure there is no direct leak path through the packing. A length of pipe will help to seat each ring. If your pump has a lantern ring, place it between the rings of packing so that it best aligns with the grease channel located halfway up the bore. Install the remaining packing rings. Install the packing gland. 
Make sure the gland is installed square and the nuts are tightened evenly until the packing gland is snug against the packing. Do not fully tighten at this time. Lubricate the shaft and inner diameter of the casing bushing. Slide the rotor shaft assembly into the casing. Place a new head gasket on the head, aligning the holes on the gaskets with the holes on the head. Installing one head cap screw can help with this. Add compatible gasket sealant if available. Place the idler in bushing assembly on the idler pin and reinstall the head. Orientation is critical. Make sure that the idler pin, which is offset in the head, is positioned toward an equal distance between the pump ports. To ensure proper orientation, line up the marks on the pump casing and head that were made prior to disassembly. If available, use the cast-in alignment marks to confirm orientation. Remove and discard the old jacket head plate O-ring. Lubricate and install the new O-ring. Install the jacket head plate. Tighten the head cap screws evenly. It is recommended to replace the bearings and lip seals in the bearing housing each time the pump packing is replaced, along with any other damaged items during the assembly. To disassemble the bearing housing, loosen the two radial set screws in the flange of the bearing housing. Then with a spanner wrench, loosen and remove the outer end cap. Remove the bearing and spacer collar. Remove the lip seals from the housing and end cap. Using an arbor press, install new lip seals with both lips facing toward the end of the shaft. Install a new spacer collar and bearing. Reinstall the bearing housing end cap. Install the spacer collar. Install new nylon slugs and set screws in the bearing housing flange and tighten against the end cap. At this point, place the pair of half round rings on the shaft and slide the inner bearing spacer collar over the half round rings to lock them in place. H and HL size pumps, as seen in this video, do not have recessed bearing spacer collars or half round rings. Install the bearing housing. Put the lock washer and lock nut on the shaft. Insert a length of hardwood or brass through the port opening between the rotor teeth to keep the shaft from turning. Tighten the lock nut to the appropriate torque value. This can be found in the service manual. Bend a tang of the lock washer into the slot of the lock nut. If the tang does not line up with the slot, tighten the lock nut until it does. Failure to tighten the lock nut or engage the lock washer tang could result in early bearing failure and cause damage to the pump. Now set the end clearance. Turn the bearing housing clockwise until it stops. Back off the bearing housing counterclockwise until the rotor shaft can be turned with a slight noticeable drag. This point is known as zero end clearance. Mark the position of the bearing housing with respect to the bracket. Using the measurement from the table in the service manual, make a second mark on the bracket left of the first mark at the distance indicated. In this example, we require 5,007 inch end clearance on a model H724 pump, so the mark is made 5 eighths of an inch away. Rotate the thrust bearing assembly counterclockwise until the bearing housing mark aligns with this new bracket mark. Tighten the two self-locking set screws in the outboard face of the bearing housing with equal force against the bracket. The pump end clearance is now set and locked. Turn the shaft to make sure it rotates freely. If not, back off an additional length on the outside diameter and check again. Note that end clearances may differ depending on application recommendations. Lubricate all grease fittings with multi-purpose grease NLGI number 2. On startup of the pump, 
carefully tighten the packing gland to reduce leakage until the desired leak rate is obtained. A little leakage during the break-in period is necessary to help lubricate and cool the packing. The maximum recommended adjustment at one time is one eighth turn. If during this period heating occurs, back off on the gland and allow the pump to run until the stuffing box cools. Then begin readjustment. The pump should leak at least a few drops a minute to make sure the packing is adequately lubricated. Your Viking 724 Series internal gear pump is fully repaired and ready to be put back into service. If you still have any questions regarding this or other Viking pump products, please contact your local authorized Viking pump distributor or visit our website at vikingpump.com.